Welcome to Boss Cowboy Sports, and today we're going to be talking about one of my favorite players, uh, Jerron Curse. Uh, also, kind of recapping one of my former videos that I did. It actually, uh, my very first video that I did on a potential prospect to the Dallas Cowboys. So, I've been very high on him uh, and documented uh, from before day one and also before i get going i want to give a special shout out to my bro uh jay tuck who also did a video on curse right here y'all make sure y'all go check that out because he really giving a lot of praise as curse has earned so y'all make sure y'all check that out as well um because curse with the dallas cowboys is a leader and the obvious leader to the team um, but I'm gonna be honest when I first started to talk about him he was considered by most a Jag just a guy nobody was really excited about him but you know one thing about me and Tuck that we've learned over the years is to stick with what you see and say it boldly because what I've learned and me and Tuck talked about this a lot of people don't do the scouting work that they say they do. I'm just being honest, because if you really do the work and you really break players down, the film is going to lead you right to the truth. And I'm going to get into that film. But before I show what happened and, and the breakdown that I did on him, I'm going to show everybody what I said in the Boss Cowboy Guide about Curse. And this is from 2020. OK. So before he was even with Detroit, right? I had him as my number one sleeper, number one sleeper in the entire safety class, number one, okay? And this is what I said about him if you look at my breakdown in my book. I said, uh, Jerron Curse, I spelled his name wrong at the bottom, but at the top I spelled it right. Jerome Curse is the boss cowboy best sleeper in the UFA safety class. He has the George Oloka size with better youth. Curse had a DWI which would lower his price. So I was looking at him as a potential steal for Dallas. This is before, way before Dallas got him. Curse also has limited film. The limited film is not due to a lack of skill, but due to a super talented safety rule. For example, this is where a lot of people thought I was crazy when I first wrote this, but it looked like I was dead right on this. But I said, for example, there was a time legendary safety Sean Taylor was a backup at the University of Miami. Was Taylor not good enough for Miami? No, Taylor was behind Hall of Famer Ed Reed. No curse is not Taylor, but Taylor is an example of how an exceptional talent can get buried. Curse would be the best deals in free agency with considerable upside. So let me see what else I said. I said, more importantly, he comes on day one as an upgrade to both Heat and Woods. So now that's cool to say, honestly. Then when I wrote it, it was not cool to say. It was not easy to say because nobody was saying that. So I'm gonna play the film right now. I'm gonna show like what my film breakdown was. This was my first film. I did butcher his name a couple of times. It was two in the morning. I was tired. I killed his name. Obviously I know exactly who he is cause I put him in my book, right? But I was tired. So y'all just forgive me on that. But y'all just check it out. Here we go. So the Dallas Cowboys are bringing in curse. Thank you. Thank you. Let's talk about it. Boss Cowboy Sports, where your voice matter. Let's get it. So 
So it just came out that the Dallas Cowboys are bringing in Curse along with Malik, along with Devontae. I feel much better now because uh, Javon is somebody that Boss Cowboy Sports, he was actually in the first Boss Cowboy Guide. Uh, and obviously that when he was in the original guide, that's something about somebody that I feel good about. So we go get right into his film. But before we do, well, I talk about it at the end where I talk about his background, why I think he would be a great candidate for the Dallas Cowboys. So let's just just jump right into it. So the first thing when you're looking at uh, Mr. Curse is what you're going to see with him is he's a, a great tackler. At, at worst, he's a good tackler. And when you at worst a good tackler, he's he's a really, really good tackler. And, and there are times to where he could even become a game changer, especially when it comes to stopping the run. And you will see, um, and I'm starting to see what Dallas is doing. Their moves are starting to look as if they are uh, definitely trying to gear up to stop the run and here you can see he's targeted this is a play action that was designed to get him with that tight end and you can see he went around it he read it he's athletic so he makes the play i would give both safeties a stick on that play uh but you could also see one thing that i would knock about him is occasionally he's late when it comes to read and run it's hard to see it but the tackles they clearly showed that it was run with the way that they engaged and that's one of the keys that you have to look for when you're playing safety or the edge with no threats and it was clearly run and he should have been there just a tad bit faster it would allow him to bring a little bit more punishment so that's that's one of the knocks that i see on him is is when he's in a place to where he has to really react sometimes his eyes can get a little bit bad that was clear run he was a little bit slow to get to it so you can see that 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 created a running lane um that, that they was able to get some good positive chunks on him but that's the only knock on him so when he learns his lessons and he start playing by instinct you see a totally different player he becomes almost like a super box guy so here we go again so same play but this time he learned his lesson he reads run a lot faster and he attacks and he starts playing with his instincts and he makes a lot of plays and you're going to see this over and over and you're going to see this almost every game to where he's going to get in that backfield more so because he started playing with instincts and he's read he read his cues right and fast so you read run he diagnose and he comes helps his assist on that 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 play with a great tackle and you're going to see him do it over and over and over again that's one of the highlights of his game is he's really good at when you put him in a box and he plays with great not not good great instincts when he's in the box it's almost if you're trying to design him as a chess piece you really want to just try to design a defense that would let him play free because when he's not diagnosing plays when he's not trying to read and react and use his eyes when he can just go you see a tremendous football player and a guy that i would even call fearless he gets in there and he, he almost looked like a safety linebacker like he's one of the better box guys and he ne this wasn't his game especially coming out of Clemson he wasn't a true box guy but he's a true football player so he's made the adjustment and here goes another play where he definitely didn't read the run but he reacted so fast he gets in there and he creates havoc so the running backs a lot of times when when he really get going he keeps the running backs from get from getting to go or get, get stopping them from get going y'all know what i'm saying but anyway you can see he's better when he's just playing fast and playing with instincts see that was that was too fast to actually read run so you could tell it was designed for him to go attack and whenever he does he makes good plays here's another play you could tell where they're out of out of building now and you likely he knew it because he attacks like very early reads it uh, gets around and running back and makes the quarterback pay. I mean, he's very, 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 very good in the box. That's why I say at worst, he's a good tackler. There are times to where he becomes super outstanding and literally almost crazy. He gets in that box and he's literally fearless over and over. And you can turn on any game and you go see him at some point in the game terrorizing in the backfield straight up just being a pure terrorist 
in the backfield so he's somebody to be excited about like he he doesn't have the name a lot of people don't know who he is but he's a very very good football player and this is definitely if they sign him a step in the right direction at stopping what was happening in 2020 and that was a nosebleed non-stop for the entire season one thing i look about him now that we're looking at him in past is he his uh, i just gotta just say it like it is Sometimes I was looking at his hands and you never want to see, you never want to see safety trying to catch like this. That's body catching. You don't want to see that. You want to see hands catching. And sometimes you can see that with him that he's not, you can see why he's likely playing, let's be honest, safety in his career because you can see in this play that this is not natural hands in terms of catching because to a good hands defensive back this is a pure easy interception he throws it right to him and he just tries to catch it with his body and his arms just wrong technique for catching the ball so we watching him also in coverage right here uh and you can see that he's very aggressive on the tight end and they get a late flag and i'm gonna tell you looked at it from a different angle it's just a bad call because the coverage is actually good the hips was actually good the matchup on the tight end was actually good he's tall and big so it makes it hard on tight end you can see see it right here he doesn't grab he doesn't hold he doesn't cuff but one thing that you see is also if you watch him closely you start seeing where he might be the liability and you can see the lack of closing speed so he's matched up on the running back right now and it looks like that's what he's assigned to and that closing speed is honestly not the greatest you just look at it you can see it um, especially when you've been watching a lot of film and you can see safeties that close at, at, exceptionally well this is not a good close and you can really see a close against a running back streaming across the field so that's not the best close and so it makes me start to wonder is he a major liability in coverage i just didn't quite see it yet as i'm studying him but as you can see he will make you pay like that he has yeah tight end you getting up like you're crunk now nah, let's be honest you got smashed right there yeah curse let you have it on the sideline as he should so you see him come out his break i don't like that he had to speed up to make him pay right there but he made him pay i would really wanted him to be at that one speed the entire time he turned it up but you know that's being critical but at the same time i would be if i want the best out of this guy same thing you'll see also in the run game you'll also see in the pass game where his eyes can get him in trouble it was clear separation on that more so because of his eyes so you'll see it better from this angle when you watch his face look at him looking back at the quarterback when the tight end gets into the top of his break and when you looking back like that that's going to cause more separation than athleticism so i keep seeing a pattern of eyes with him sometimes getting him in trouble but i still love the fact and you're gonna always see when i break down safety you can always see me look at them in open field tackles and you're gonna see me find some film somewhere of them having to use courage and this is him going head up with cook and having a jarring match that's what you want that's exactly what you want so and over and over and over again you're going to see him willing to take on the running backs so that's why i said over and over and over again this guy is a good tackler at worst so in terms of improving the run game i see what you're doing dallas if you bring this guy in this would be a good signing and this would be somebody that would definitely let's just be honest move donovan wilson more into a single high position because this guy's going to play in the box and when you see him even you know back there he's strong like this tackle right here on this receiver perfect gator roll tackle and he injured him it wasn't intentional he just strong like he threw the man and twisted his leg it's not intentional it's just he's strong like he he has brute strength and he's so lucky nelson just didn't drink his juice that day because nelson could have killed him right there nelson just i guess was being nice and that's not like nelson but that's another subject so let's just get into the breakdown of the all 22 of javon curse and let's just kind of just talk about it uh and and the thing that i like about him is he's long and you see that hip and especially when he's attacking in the backfield he has low usage and i said i was gonna get to that what really happened to him is he was a really good player drafted from clemson but sometimes you can be a good player where you're drafted into a deep room 
he 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 was drafted into the minnesota vikings come on now when anthony harris back there with smith when would you ever see the field so there was there's really very low tread on him and that's why i put him in the boss cowboy god last year because i knew he wasn't getting the normal developmental reps of a safety because he was in the deep room so it's almost ask yourself what would happen to a tight end the last 10 years if they came in with Witten. It wouldn't even really matter how good you are. It was the guy that you was behind that was gonna make you because of his name and the love they had for him. You was gonna sit your butt on the bench. That's what was happening with him. So really when you look at him, he is really having his first year of starting. So that's why you shouldn't be too technical on this guy because he's just now getting his starting legs under him so going to, this would really be like him going into year two even though he's obviously very much so a veteran but he's very young as well so obviously we saw on the film the great run stopping instincts that was obvious he's a natural box safety because I, that wasn't what he was doing in college but when they called on him to do it you could tell that he did it fearlessly and I would just call him just a great football player when you can go from being a single hop when you was playing it in college and then they call on you to play in the box and you look natural in the box you're just a natural football player uh and that's just how i see the guy's not pretty but he's a natural football player the cons one of the cons that i didn't like is that he was targeted that makes me say that somewhere he was beat uh and i just didn't find it because I kept seeing plays that was actually designed to try to take him out. It, like the play action that we showed on the tight end and then another uh, um, Matt Ryan tried to target him where it was designed to really target him deep that tells me somewhere people are also seeing that lack of closing speed and that lack of game speed and they're putting it in their game plans to try to get him or likely maybe obviously because of all that great play we were seeing in the backfield they thinking that he's subject to play action and they target him so I'm gonna keep reviewing film because somewhere he must have been a liability at some point because almost every game that I saw you could see a direct scheme where they was targeting him for a big play so his eyes would also get him in trouble on the run game we showed that uh, his eyes also got him in trouble on the pass game and he's young so young meaning that can be a problem in terms of his experience but I mean this is a very 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 good candidate for the Dallas Cowboys I could see if they was to do this, this would be in a step in the right direction in terms of major run stopping. Uh, I think they would need to work with him, especially on his hips, work on his coverage a little bit. Definitely put him on a jug machine, work on those hands. You can't catch balls with your chest. You still got to use the proper mechanics of catching the ball, which increases your chances of the interception. A lot of people don't know how to catch, honestly, because their dads never worked with them <laughs> when they was young. So he looks like he really needs to go back to school in terms of catching the ball better. Um, but I will put him in a situation if the Dallas Cowboys to, was to acquire him. He seems like the type of guy that you want to put him in situations to play off his instincts. Because the film clearly showed over and over and over again that he's a much better player when you put him in a play, place to where he can just play fast. So. If you like the content that you're getting, then you go get a lot more content with Boss Cowboy Sports. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe, and follow us because we're on all the platforms from the YouTube to the Facebook to the Instagram to the Twitter. You'll know where to find us. And remember, we're loyal and we're going to tell it like it is on what we see. Some of these names not going to be big, but we're going to evaluate them anyway. If we like what we see, we go see it. If we don't, we go see it. But at the end of the day, you definitely know that we're being honest. Y'all stay up. So obviously, you know, that shows a lot of history of what I thought and think of Curse. And a lot of it played out exactly like I said. I talked about Dallas using him as a linebacker slash safety. That ended up being true. I talked about his phenomenal instincts. That ended up being true. Uh, and this is all from just the film. I didn't know him. Uh, he wasn't on our team yet, but it's about allowing the film to lead us in the right direction, not opinions, film. And he was always cheated. I'm gonna be always honest with you, he was always cheated. 
He should have been drafted higher because he was an All-American. He had ball skills at Clemson. I clearly saw that he was playing more of a single high safety when he was at Clemson. He had about seven interceptions. He, like he was always the leader that he, that he is now. It's just that he was in a deep room. So it's about what are the lessons that we could learn when we look back, right? When, when somebody as good as curse was considered literally a jack yeah because see it's a lot of people that's gonna try to brag on curse but see it, it was no nah, it wasn't a lot of people excited about curse when he first got here it wasn't but now that he's here what can we learn from it what what it says to me is trust guys that put up good film especially on a high level when you looked at he was a good player at Clemson, All-American at Clemson, leader at Clemson, and George Edwards was the one that recruited him, it always made sense. Just being honest, he always made sense. And he was never, until Dallas, given the proper opportunity. And y'all can see from the receipt of my film and the first film, that he paid, he panned out. I the boldest prediction that I that I think I made on that particular film is I said that he was gonna force Donovan Wilson to have to play another safety position because of how good he was in the box. Yeah, I remember getting laughed at. I, I showed do let me see if I got the laugh button. <laughs> It was a lot of laughter. <laughs> it was a lot of laughter. Because remember Donovan Wilson, he was on the scene and he was rocking. So, but it's about sticking to the film. If you stick to the film and you bold about what you see, not based on what everybody's saying, bold about what you see, especially when you did the work, you gonna come out right. And the people that did all the talking, they gonna come out wrong. So, as a bonus, it's a couple of guys that I think got an opportunity to be the next curse. And I'm gonna just talk about it, just as bonus, bonus content. Hunter has an opportunity. I'm not sure if he's gonna do it because the level of competition is still a concern to me. I was bold about curse because I saw him do it at high levels at Clemson, big games at Clemson. I watched him close. I I was studied him close. I was I was confident, and you can see that I was very confident. But Hunter has a lot of skill that you can't deny. But more importantly, he go get his chance uh, because Clarence Hill came on the final word, and he said Stephen Jones himself said that they go make sure they give him a chance so he go get every crack at it so it's because he showed some flash I just want to see it on the next level if I see it on the next level I'm gonna start betting on him very aggressively but I got to see it first Runner Jones is also my next candidate the next candidate I believe has the opportunity to have to go from just a guy again to potentially getting his name back but again I can't have the confidence that I had in Curse because he didn't give me the sample of games that I saw in Curse. So I saw Curse deep with Minnesota and I saw them creating positions for Curse. That told me a lot about him. Uh, Runner Jones, he didn't, he didn't hardly have any snaps the last two years. So, but those are guys that I would say as of now, as of now, as of today, are some of the candidates that could end up being curse types to where you got a chance to get your name and win the crowd. Uh, so also, you know, before I get up out of here, I do want to let y'all know we do got Vach coming in uh, on the 27th. So he's going to be here on the 27th. Uh, we gonna obviously have some good football discussions with that. We also have Scott coming in the day after that. And also Jay Tuck will be with all of these guys as well as Brandon Tuck. Uh, we also have RJ Achoa who committed. 
um i just need to check my twitter responses to see if we got that date lo locked in we also have jets uh coming up very soon um we pr basically got the date with her as well so y'all continue to follow this channel because we will continue to give you the best that we can give you and giving you uh straight up content but i'm gonna be honest curse is the one that i'm proud of this is the this was my first film breakdown historical and it's curse is one of the guys that i always knew deserved it but then i'm just to i bet on them like and i really stamped it i put four stars by his name one two three four and i usually only go up to three if anybody been everybody that purchased my books know that i usually go on a three star scale i put four stars by curse and called him my number one sleeper yeah so uh so you know some people say don't brag i guess that might be bragging i'm not trying to but I, i'm i want to re show this again because I, i'm really am proud of this this was not easy to stand on the ledge for a guy that most people was calling the jag but he ended up being the man he ended up being a blessing to the dallas cowboys so y'all stay up it's boss cowboy sports i'm gonna continue to get this type of content make our voice matter share this and come back to the final word because we're gonna keep giving y'all that sauce until then y'all stay up peace